Hello everyone. In previous lecture, we derived an expression for the capacitance of a transmission line in which the conductors were placed symmetrically. That is the distance between each conductor of phase was same. That is they were placed on the vertices of an equilateral triangle. Today, we will derive an expression for the capacitance of a transmission line where the conductors are not spaced symmetrically. That is the spacing between the different phases is different. Due to this, the capacitance will be different. Now, before moving on to the derivation, I want to inform you that since this is a video lecture, then it is easily possible for everyone to replay the video and make notes. First, I think you should try to understand what is uh, being told. After that, if you after that, if you understand, then you should make the notes up by replaying the video. Although you might consider that the board here is too crowded, but once you understand all the concepts, then it will be very easy to make notes out of it. I have written everything on the board so that I do not waste your time in teaching and writing uh, simultane simultaneously. It will unnecessarily waste your time. Now next we move on to the derivation. As we already know that capacitance of a line is proportional to d equivalent by r. This expression was derived earlier. So, we know that it depends upon the radius as well as the spacing between the conductors. Now, if the spacing between the conductors for each phase is different, then the capacitance of each phase will be different. So, how to deal with this situation? How to derive an expression for such a system? So, for that, what we do, we transpose the various phases of the transmission line. What does it mean? As we already seen when, deri when we derived an expression for the inductance of a transmission line, that if the spacing was not symmetrical, we transpose the line although practically it is not done so much often or it is not very common it is usually done at only switch at switching stations or uh, in intermediate substations we have also seen in our uh, derivation of inductance for untra uh, for transposed lines there was an image of a transposition tower which is, which is used for transposition similar towers are used for transposition transposition only but they are not very common. But for derivation part, we will consider that the line is transposed. That, that is, each phase conductor will occupy the position which will be occupied by other phase conductor also for an equal length. So that every conductor goes to every position possible and occupy that position for the equal length. So that the capacitance which we will derive can be equal or can be very close to equal if we take their average. So, let us see how it is done. Here, I have shown three positions, position 1, position 2 and position 3, which can be occupied by three all the three phases that is phase A, phase B, phase C. Now, here I have tried to show you the projection of these distances on 2D plane. So, I have shown position 1 here. This is position 1 and this is position 2 and this is position 3. Now, in section 1, let us say every section is having length small l is also having small l length and small l length. Okay. Now, in position in section 1, Conductor A or phase A will occupy position 1, conductor of phase B will occupy position 2 and conductor of phase C will occupy position 3. Now, we will do some transpose and we will come to the next section. Now, in this section, A which was occupying position 1 will come to position 2, B which was occupying position 2 will come to position 3 and C will go to position 1. Similarly, in section 3, C will occupy position 2, 
A will occupy position 3 and B will occupy position 1. So we see that every phase has occupied every position possible and the length for which that position is occupied is same for every section. In this way, we try to neutralize any dissymmetry which can occur due to unequal spacings. Now let us write the equation for the potential difference between two points in these sections. So writing here the potential difference between point AB that is between A and B in section 1 only and writing it as VAB1. So we will use the same expression and 1 by 2 pi epsilon will come out of the bracket because it is common in every term and writing for QA natural log D2 by D1. Now for QA that is for charge A what is D2? D2 is simply D12 and what is D1? D1 will be that is position of point 1 will be just its radius. So that's why I have written D12 by R. Now next we write due to the charge B. So for charge B what will be the D2, D2 that is the position of point 2. So point 2 is here. So for charge B, position of point 2 will be just R, R distance away. So that is why we have written R and D1 will be position of point 1 will be D12 distance away. So I have written here D12. Now for charge C, position for charge C, position 1 is at D31 away and position 2 is at D23 away for section 1. So I will write D2 by D1 that is D23 by D31 and it will give me the expression for VAB in section 1. Now writing similarly for section 2, we can use similar arguments for section 2 also. Also we can write it directly by just increasing this subscript by 1 only. So what I will do? I will change 1 to 2, 2 to 3, D to 3 by R. Although I can write it using this shortcut, I can also write using the same arguments which I have done for section 1. Let us say we will write the expression for VAB due to charge 2. Then for charge 2, that is for charge QB, now B is at this place at position 3. So we are trying to find the potential dif difference between these two points. So what will be D2? D2 will be the position of point 2 only, which will come out to be here only, R. And what will be D1? That is the position of A. And it is how much distance away? D23 away. So that's why I have written D23. Similarly, for charge QC, I can just increment or write from the similar arguments. Now, for section 3, it is very easy. We will use the same shortcut also. I will increment every subscript by 1, 2 to 3, 3 to 1. That is in a cycle. 1, 2, 3. 1 will change to 2, 2 will change to 3, 3 will, stay, will change to 1. So 2 will change to 3, 3 will change to 1 and similarly here 3 will change to 1, 1 will change to 2 and 1 will change to 2 here and 2 will change to 3. So in this way, I will get the expression for VAB in section 3 also. So we have got three equations for the various voltage of VAB in these sections. Now we will do one assumption here that is we will assume something here. As you can see that since the distance between the various conductors is different, so the distribution of charge will be different here. Here some distribution will get affected by this position or this charge also. Similarly, when A will come here, then QC will have some different effect it was having in this position that is their effect will change. So the charge distribution will be not similar, will, will not be same as it was in section 1. So what we have assumed here that this QA, this QA remains same in 
every section that is we have assumed that vab1 vab2 vab3 may vary since we have taken that charges are same so this should be compensated by variation in the voltage but we are we already know that the phase to neutral voltage quite remains same so the error will be negligible but as you can see in the case of inductor while we were deriving the expression for flux linkages we were taking the current ia ib ic but you know as in a transmission line the current remains uh, more or less same in every section so the expression for inductance was more accurate as compared to the expression which we will get for the capacitance of the line so we will assume here that the charge remains same same or uh, which uh, for uh, the charge remains same in every section and we will take the average of these voltages to consider it as the actual voltage between the phase a and b that is we will write vab as the average of vab1 vab2 vab3 so what i will do i will sum these three and divide by 3 so 1 by 2 pi epsilon is common so divided by 3 it will give me 1 by 6 pi epsilon not now i will take q a common and these expression will result this will be added this will be added this will be added similarly for q b i will take q b common and this result will be there similarly for q c q c will be common and this result will be there now we know that natural log a plus natural log b can be written as natural log a b that's what i will do in the next step i will change this plus sign to multiplication sign what it what this same thing has been done here natural log d12 d23 d31 and r r r will give me r cube similarly here r r r will give me r cube d12 d23 d31 d12 d23 d31 now you can see that d23 d31 d12 divided by d23 d31 d12 that is this this numerator and denominator is same for qc so natural log 1 is equal to 0 so this term will be 0 giving me vab as 1 by 6 pi epsilon QA natural log d12 d23 d31 by r cube plus QB natural log r cube by d12 d23 d31. Now you see, if I write this thing as d equivalent, so if I replace the cube root of this thing as d equivalent, so d q what will be d equivalent cube? just simply this expression d12 d23 d31 so i will write d equivalent in place of its cube root so i will write here and put the value then it will come out to be d equivalent by r whole cube similarly it will come out to be r by d equivalent whole cube now we know that natural log a to the power b can be written as b natural log a so this power will come forward and it will come out of the bracket so 3 will come here 3 will uh, cancel 6 by 2 so i will get 1 by 2 pi epsilon qa natural log equivalent uh, d equivalent by r plus qb natural log r by d equivalent now you see that this d equivalent this d equivalent which i will write here d equivalent equal to cube root of d12 d23 d31 is same as that of the expression which we got while we derived for the inductance of a three phase uh, unequilaterially spaced transmission line that is the same thing which we got for the inductance also Now, so you can see the similarity here but the difference is that here we are using r the actual radius of the conductor in inductance we were using r prime that is 0.7788 r which was self gmd of the solid conductor 
Now, similarly, I can write the expression for VAC also. So, I will write VAC as 1 by 2 pi epsilon QA natural log D equivalent by R and QC natural log R by D equivalent. So, adding these two, 5 and 6, adding these two equations, what I will get? You see, this thing, natural log R by D equivalent is common. So, QB plus QC will be there. That is, I will get the expression QB plus QC natural log D equivalent by R. Sorry, R, R by D equivalent. When I will add equation 5 and 6, I will get one of this term. Now, I know that QA plus QB plus QC is equal to 0. So, QB plus QC is equal to minus A and taking this minus A inside of the log, it will get inverted. So, what I will get? I will get 3 times of QA natural log D equivalent by R. Now, in the previous video, in the just previous video, we have seen that VAB plus VAC can be written as 3 times of VAN that is voltage to neutral. So, I will equate this, I have equated this here, 3 will get cancelled. So, VAN, VAN that is voltage of A to the neutral will come out to be 1 by 2 pi epsilon QA natural log D equivalent by R. So, writing the expression for capacitance that is it can be written as charge on conductor A or phase A per unit length divided by the potential difference between the that phase and the neutral and the expression expression will come out to be 2 pi epsilon natural log D equivalent by R. So, we see here that the expression remains similar in form as that of the uh, case in which the transmission line was symmetrically spaced. The difference is that D has been replaced with D equivalent. That is that this is an equivalent spacing which will give me the same expression which was for the symmetrical spacing. And this is the same factor which we got while we derived the expression for inductance also. So, we see a similarity here that whatever tricks or shortcuts or concepts which we used for derivation in, uh, of inductance, similar things, similar methods can be used for the derivation of capacitance also. In the next lecture, uh, we will derive an expression for the effect of presence of earth. We will see that since earth acts as a conductor or a conducting plane, we can replace it by the image of the conductors uh, using the image method. So, in the next video, we will consider the effect of earth also. Now, if you find my lectures helpful, then it is requested that you please share and subscribe my YouTube channel and also join the telegram group which is for open for everyone for discussing any doubts which you come in the topics which are covered in the video lectures. Thank you.